Father, I just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But Father, I just thank you that every Thursday, every Sunday, Lord, and every time we just get in your presence, Lord, every time, Father, we're after your presence. Father, we're just trying to get closer to you, Lord Jesus. You always show up, Lord. Father, I thank you that I don't serve a God that's dead. I don't serve a God that's not listening. I don't serve a God that doesn't talk. I don't serve a God uh, that doesn't move and doesn't heal and doesn't set free. I serve a God that does all those things. And I thank you, Jesus, Lord, that, Lord, if we come believing and expecting, Lord, I know that you will show up every single time, Lord. You show up every time, Lord. That Father, every time we ask you to move in our lives, Lord, you move, Lord. You heal us. You set us free. You reveal us your truth and your word, Lord. Father, without it, we can't do anything, Lord Jesus. Father, I just thank you, Father. Your word says many are called, but few are chosen. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, that you found us worthy to be, to be chosen, Lord. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that even though at times, Lord, we don't feel worthy, and even at times, Lord, we don't feel good enough. Lord Jesus, it's through your blood that we're made good enough, Lord. It's through you, Jesus, that we were made worthy, Lord, to be called and to be chosen, Lord. And I just thank you, Father God. I pray that today... Whatever concerns, whatever worries, whatever hurts we may be having, whatever stress that may have uh, piled up on us, maybe at, from work and just life in general, that, Lord, that may be a distraction to us um, hearing this word and receiving it, Lord. I pray that we would just push that all that to the side, Lord, so, Lord, we could give you our full undivided attention, Lord, and just uh, be able to be receptive to your word and your message, Lord. Father, if there's anything that's going to block the word in us, I pray right now it be removed in Jesus' name. That whatever distraction and, and thoughts the enemy may want, want to put in our minds, Lord, we, we we block it out in Jesus' name, Lord. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just speak through me, Lord. It's not my words, Father God. It's not what I think. It's not what I say. It's not what my denomination, my religion. No, it's Father God. It's whatever your word says, Lord. And I pray you would teach us your word. Give us the humility, Lord, that we need to receive your word, Lord. We don't go into this thing just with already our own thoughts in, in, in mind and what we've been taught uh, already set in place. No, Lord, that whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say, Lord, speak to us, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Edify us in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, guys, I'm going to go straight into this word. Um, Who here <laughs> has been dealing with persecution in their personal life? In this past couple of weeks, maybe past couple of months, who here has been dealing with persecution and discouragement? The persecution and discouragement. Praise God. And this message is timely. Amen. I think we sometimes we go through, you know, persecutions at work, persecutions in the midst of our families, friendships for the sake of Jesus Christ. Uh, I know I've been dealing with it myself. I've been getting persecuted myself. Uh, <laughs> ever since I decided to step in ministry and start preaching the word of God, everybody's coming out of the woodworks to, uh, to come against me and say things against me. And uh, it, it's the enemy. The enemy is upset and he tries to do these things to discourage you, to discourage you so you don't keep doing what you're doing in Christ. Listen, if you're not a threat to the enemy, he doesn't come after you. He doesn't bother you. He lets you keep doing your little life. But when you're doing things for Jesus Christ and you're preaching his word, persecution will come. The Bible says it. And I was I myself was dealing with it. And um, it kind of discouraged me for a little bit until I read a scripture in the book of Acts that the apostles were getting uh, persecuted for preaching Jesus, preaching the true word of God. Because how many know when you preach the true word of God, it offends people. Listen, if it doesn't offend people, the gospel, you're not really preaching the gospel. That's the truth of it. And a lot of religious people don't like to hear that. If they, if that's not true, then why did they crucify Jesus? If the gospel doesn't offend, if the message and the word of God, people say, oh, the gospel is, is good news. Yes, it's good news if you're coming to Christ. But it's bad news for you if you don't want to believe in the Bible and the whole Bible Guys, and I'm here to tell you the Bible and the gospel of Jesus is the entire Bible. There's been this saying that the the that the 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 that Jesus is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No, Jesus is Genesis to Revelation. And that's something that I, I I've been raised to say, yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But man, Jesus has has been around before 
Genesis before all this and after Revelation. He, there's no beginning or end to him. And he's all of those things. So when you preach this word, when you preach what the Bible says, a lot of people get upset, don't like it, and they'll, they'll come after you. When you're standing for Jesus Christ, people will persecute you. They'll call you stupid. They'll call you dumb. They'll call you religious. They'll tell you <laughs> that you're using the Bible to come after them and after other people, and people get upset and emotional in their feelings. Listen, people are threatened by the word of God, and that's the reality of it because it confronts their life. And listen, it, yes, it should. It confronts my life. You know, sometimes I, I, guys, I preach and I preach hard and people say, oh, who does he think he is? I, I think I'm just a person who's trying my best that I can do to live for Jesus Christ. You don't think every time I preach that word doesn't hit me and I have to repent from things and I don't have to turn away from things and that I don't have to humble myself. I have to do the same thing you guys do. It just happens to be that I do it before the but before you guys get to hear it. But there's times where I get messages and I'm on my knees crying at home. I'm on my knees and stuff like that. And a lot of people don't see that. So when they hear you preach with boldness and authority, uh, who do you think you are? Uh, I'm a child of God is who I think. When anyone ever comes, by the way, whenever you're getting persecuted and somebody tells you, who do you think you are? That's already the devil talking because the devil is the only one that tries to make you question your identity. Uh, Jesus is constantly telling you who you are. So what do you think the devil is going to say? Who do you think you are? Right. <laughs> so whenever the devil is talking, it always starts off by who do you think you are? Right. So when you're trying to stand for Jesus Christ, people say, who do you think you are? You think you're so holy. You think you're at it all right. You think you're. I already know it's the devil talking through people. But, you know, this is a message the Lord gave me because I believe that in this time and, and what we're living in, especially we're living in biblical end times. Um, The church has to get accustomed and, and, and know that we're going to deal with persecution. And unfortunately, sometimes persecution um, sometimes brings discouragement. See, when the when the enemy is coming after you, when the devil is after you, when demons are after you, demons is inside of people are coming after you to talk bad about you, uh, make false comments about you, to make you know judgments about you, criticize how you follow Christ and and all these things, those are always the voice of the devil. The Bible says that the accuser of the brethren is Satan. So when anyone is coming to accuse you in your life, accuse you in your walk with Christ, accuse you for following Jesus the way that you do, accuse you at work, accuse you amongst family, and all these things already, you, just got, you got to make this understanding that that is the devil speaking, whether it's through a demon, an attack on your mind, or a person that has risen up to come against you. Um, that is Satan, because the Bible says the accuser of the brethren is Satan. How many here have been dealing with some accusations? People saying you're not a real Christian. Some say you don't really have the Holy Spirit. Um, some saying you, you're following something that's wrong. Um, you're not. You're, you, who do you think you are? Uh, you've become uh, religious. <laughs> you've become too hard uh, with this Christian stuff. And um, that is the accuser of the brethren, which is the devil, because, see, everybody's a Christian. And I'm going to quote Marcus Rogers, who's a preacher, who says that everyone's a Christian until the time it's time to become biblical. Most people don't even know the Bible, don't even read the Bible and misquote the Bible out of context. And um, when you stand on the true word of God. You will be persecuted when you are truly standing for Jesus Christ you will get persecuted. When persecution comes, you cannot let it discourage you. The Bible says when the fiery trials and tribulations come to test you, it says don't act like something strange is happening to you. It says for our brethren across the world are dealing with the same thing. So basically in all over parts of the world, we deal with persecution. Your job doesn't want you to talk about Christ. Uh, doesn't want you to say this or do that. I was seeing this on, on Facebook. Uh, Isaiah Saldivar, a Christian podcaster, I guess Facebook is trying to delete his full, uh, Facebook profile because it says it doesn't allow him to pray for sick people. <laughs> it, 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 you see, that's that's persecution of uh, of us as Christians. And all these different things that are going on in the world, they've got rid of, you know, kick prayer out of school. Now they're bringing other things into the school, which I can't say because this video is going to go on on YouTube and they'll ban my video so no one will hear it. But you guys know what I mean. 
what's going into the schools, what's going on into this world, what's going on in our in our jobs where you know you can't stand for Christ. And the you know what the worst part of this persecution part is? The majority of the persecution that we sometimes deal with as true followers of Christ, it comes from other Christians. Well, so-called Christians. See, because not everyone who, pro who professes Christ is actually a Christian. The Bible says many will come in my name and say, Lord, Lord. So it's not always about who you call Lord. It's what God calls you, right? And everybody says they're a Christian, like I said, but it's until you get biblical, they're not Christian no more. So we got to learn how to deal with persecution because, guys, unfortunately, the way the world is going, the way life is going, I mean, you, you watch the news every day. I mean, everyone wants to get rid of Christ at all costs. But the thing is, what kind of Christ? See, if you're this uh, tolerant Christian where nothing is wrong, you don't call nothing out, you don't come against sin, you don't, you know, you don't stand for these things. No one's going to persecute you. No one's, everyone's going to leave you alone. Why are they trying to get rid of Christianity? The the parts of the Bible that threatens people's lifestyle is the ones that people do not want to hear. They don't want, oh, you're saying it and you're saying it in hatred. Where's the love? You don't, you don't have no love in your heart. Listen, I'm rebuking you and correcting you and exhorting you because I love you. And I hope that you get it together. But like, think about it. Imagine your child tells you, you know, you're trying to correct your kid from doing something wrong. And they, they tell you, why are you correcting me and rebuking me? You have hatred in your heart. No, I'm correcting you, my son, daughter, because I love you and I don't want to see you go in the wrong path. But in today's world, truth is considered hate speech. <laughs> so we're going to deal with persecution. And I believe it's just only a matter of time before it just becomes more and more in your life. And it has to. And I believe that in this season that we're going through, people are going to persecute you. Your family is going to persecute you. Your friends are going to persecute you. Your job is going to persecute you. Why? Because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Reality is, is, is you can't take these things personal. <laughs> That's something I've been <laughs> getting accustomed to. The Lord told me, Jamie, don't, don't take it personal against you. Because you know that if you didn't preach Christ, you didn't preach what you were saying, and you go back to the world. See, see, Jamie, when I was in the world, old Jamie that fornicated, you know, was fighting and, and, and lying and being angry and prideful, the devil wasn't persecuting me. Nobody came after me because I was, I was on Team Satan. But see, when I decide to follow Christ, now everyone wants to come after me. Now all these problems want to come after me. Now people want to betray me. Now people want to talk about me. Guys, you have no idea how much hate I get on YouTube. <laughs> you uh, you probably don't see it because I delete them super fast because I don't I I don't give people the time of day. I get so much hatred on YouTube from people. Who do you think you are saying you cast out demons and pray for the sick? You know the Bible says that, and the, many are going to say they cast out demons and pray for the sick, and they're going to go to hell. Yes, I believe that scripture wholeheartedly that there will be people who do those things. But those are people who have no relationship with Jesus Christ. It Bible's not condemning the person who does those acts, is the people who does this acts as if that's the reason why they get saved. And um I get so much hatred from that, and I get I started getting hatred from other routes as well. But all of that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's it's all about Jesus. It's not about Jamie, it's not about anyone else, it's about Jesus Christ. And when I when I was, you know, when I was thinking about this word. The apostles were being persecuted for what they were preaching because it was offending. It was offending religious people. And when it was offending them, the apostles said this, that they find it like they they are, they rejoiced. How many here rejoice when they, someone's coming after them? Not a lot of us. I actually get mad sometimes. And I'm being 100% honest. I get in my flesh and I get upset. I'll say, man, if that person would never say that in my face. And obviously, that's not a good place to say that from. That's why I preached on Sunday. You got to crucify your flesh. The Bible says it is an honorable thing um, to overlook an offense. But see, the apostles, they said, man, that they rejoiced that they found themselves worthy to suffer disgrace for Jesus' name. When was you Think about it. When someone's coming after you and you know they're coming after you because you decided to start following Jesus the, the right way. Because, see, <laughs> going to church doesn't mean you're following Jesus. You know, you're doing your quick little ritual prayer that you do every day doesn't mean you're following. It's when you live a life that's holy. You live a life that's righteous. You start telling people, live holy, live righteous. Oh, you're being religious. No, the Bible says, be holy just as God is holy. You start preaching holiness and righteousness, and everyone's going to look at you like you're crazy. And, and that's where persecution comes. If you're not getting persecuted for your faith, there really is no faith there. 
And 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 that's the reality of it. You know, well, we gotta start seeing things different. Say, man, wow, like I I'm gonna rejoice in this because Christ found me worthy to be per to suffer disgrace for his name's sake. And it doesn't feel good. But I'm here to tell you guys, this is what this is what you're gonna be dealing with. And man, you're gonna deal with people af coming after you, you're gonna deal with people talking about you, you're gonna deal with people trying to discourage you and kill what you're doing and you can't listen to it because the end of at the end of the day whoever it's coming from it's not really coming from them it's really coming from the devil that's influencing them so they can stop you right so persecution you might be saying so well um why why do we have to be persecuted right why do you have to why do you have to be persecuted well, Second Timothy verse three to uh Second Timothy chapter three verse twelve it says, Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Does that say just some people? No. It says everyone who wants to live a god not profess, not just say I'm a Christian. Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ, the Bible here says, will suffer persecution. So when you want to live a godly life, haven't you noticed that when you decided to live a godly life, everyone wants to come look for you now? They want to invite you to the club. Now they want to invite you to go smoke. Now they want to invite you to do these things. All of a sudden you decide to live a godly life. You decided to do your calling, your ministry. Now family members want to talk about you. They want to come against you. Now they want to cause problems and issues in your life. Now friendships are churning against you. Now, now all these people are coming against you. Why? Because you have decided to live a godly life because all of a sudden now your godly life offends them. Your godly life makes them feel intimidated and threatened that is the same life that jesus lived his life threatened and intimidated people who didn't have a relationship with god who thought they had a relationship with god can i get an amen see the pharisees the religious people who were following traditions and all these different things, they thought they had a relationship with Jesus Christ. So when Jesus came on the scene and started casting out demons, praying for the sick, rebuking the religious people, and he started doing what he was what he was called to do, it, it offended them, it threatened them, and it made them feel inferior. So what did they do? They persecuted him. And Jesus said, if they hate you, remember that they hated him first. So when people are persecuting you because you decided to live a godly life, well, guess what? It's because they, they don't really hate you. They hate the Jesus inside of you. And that person might just say, I don't hate Jesus. Well, you hate the true Jesus because you start preaching what Jesus preached. See, people say, oh, the gospel. You got it, brother. You, brother, you talk too much about all these things. Get back to the gospel. Do you understand what the gospel even is? When you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, was it all sunshines, flowers, and butterflies? No, it wasn't. Jesus rebuked people. Jesus rebuked prostitutes. People say, oh, but you're not Jesus. But what did Jesus say? Jesus says, you shall do greater things in my name. So we're supposed to do the works of Jesus. And more people, I've heard people say, well, brother, you know, we're supposed to be like Christ. But um, brother, does it mean you're good? You, you are Jesus. You're supposed to. Be like him. When you say you're a Christian, you say you are like him. You need to preach what he preached. You need to do what he did because that is what the Bible says. How is it that the Holy Spirit comes inside of you for you not to say what he said, for you not to do what he did? The very reason why he left his spirit inside of you is so you can do the works of Jesus, so you can say the same things Jesus said, so you can live a godly life. So when you make it in your mind, you set your mind on, I want to live a godly life for Jesus, then you need to prepare yourself for everybody to come against you. You need to prepare yourself for the people that you love and you care for start talking bad about you. You need to prepare that your job may not like you your job may not want to promote you because all of a sudden the gospel come on somebody the gospel and the word that you preach makes them feel threatened and makes them feel intimidated all of a sudden they see you as an enemy think about that 
And we got to get used to that. Oh, I, oh, you, you've become cultish. Oh, you've become, uh, you know, you become fanatical with this stuff. Oh, you preach too much the word of God. And, uh, and now they start nitpicking you. See, when you're persecution, when you're dealing with persecution, the enemy will send some people to nitpick you. They want to nitpick everything about your lifestyle and say, ha ha, you said you believe the Bible, but look, you don't believe this. Oh, you don't. You say you're a Christian. Why are you doing this? And to nitpick you. See, persecution doesn't always come in the sense of you. I'm going to throw you in jail or I'm going to kill you. Persecution can come in the sense of I'm not going to be your friend no more. I don't want to be your family no more. I don't want to come over your house no more. I don't want to talk to you no more. I'm going to take you off Instagram and Facebook. That's what persecution may look like. Amen. So all these different things will arise in your life. And then all of a sudden people start nitpicking you because they want to get to you. See, persecution is when the enemy is trying to get you to start acting out of character. See, when the enemy is trying to persecute you is so you can slip up in an area of your life that you don't want to slip up in because he wants your testimony to go out the window. But see, as a Christian, when you're dealing with persecution, you must you must be able to maintain your testimony. Guys, you don't think there's times that people persecute me. They say disrespectful things about me and I, i'm thinking how i'm gonna punch them in their mouth i deal with those things sometimes but that is what you crucify the flesh and you you can't just preach jesus you got to act like jesus as well and when jesus was being persecuted he didn't curse them out he didn't fight them he didn't he didn't disrespect them he didn't go making videos and attacking people he he loved he prayed for them man he said god bless them for they do not know what they're doing because reality is is people when they persecute you for being a follower of jesus christ if they really 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 knew what they were doing they wouldn't do it see if they knew, really knew who you are a man of god and a woman of god they wouldn't be talking about you but see the reality is some people that proclaim to have christ don't really have the holy spirit see the biggest persecution i see right now going on in, in christianity is the true believers versus the fake believers can i get an amen because see the thing is you make a guys i know i make a facebook post i'll say and i'll quote a scripture the bible says um these signs will believe those. These signs will follow those who believe. They'll cast out demons, pray for the sick, and speak in new tongues. Somebody will comment with their feelings and their emotions. Oh, brother, but I never cast out demons. So you're saying that I don't believe. And I'm, yo, bro, like you're getting toxic there. Yo, like that's what the I quoted the Bible. You so you you come in to argue with me, but that shows that you have an issue with the Bible. You don't have an issue with me. You have an issue with what the Bible says. The Bible says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Oh, you're being religious because the Bible says to live holy. The Bible says to rebuke and exhort. The Bible says that if a brother is heading in a sin that's lead towards death, it says call him out. You do that. Oh, there's no brother. You don't have love in your heart. Why are you calling people out? Who do you think you are? I'm blah, blah, blah. The Bible says to expose the unfruitful works of darkness. And you start doing that. They start coming after you. It is the biggest persecution you're going to deal with as a Christian is other so-called Christians that will come after you. Think about it. The people that persecuted Christ, the people who persecuted the apostles and the disciples that came after them, the majority of them were who? Religious people who said they follow God and believe God. It was them. You got to get used to this. You're going to have people at your job who say they're Christian and they don't really live for Christ. They don't even probably have the Holy Spirit. They're probably not even saved. And they will persecute you. You will have family members who says, oh, yeah, I believe in God. And they'll come after you because you believe the scriptures and you decided to live a godly life. See, there's there's, there's this Christianity that you, you can proclaim to love Jesus, that you can say that you're all for Jesus Christ. But they don't live a godly life. The sign that you follow Christ is that you live a godly life. And this is what the Bible says, not what Jamie says. It says, it says 2 Timothy 3.12. Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So everyone who decides to live a godly life and follow Jesus Christ, you will suffer persecution. Jesus said it. When people say, oh, well, you're not Jesus. But Jesus said, let's quote what Jesus said. Jesus said, because you share in my glory you will share in my suffering. That's what Jesus said. So yes, <laughs> oh, you're not Jesus, but Jesus lives inside of me. Amen. Revelations 14, 12. It says, this means, once again, when people say, oh, you know, is that, that was Jesus. You're not Jesus. Well, Revelations 14, 12, it says, this means that God's holy people must endure persecution 
patiently obeying his commands, maintaining their faith in Jesus Christ. So the Bible tells us that we must be able to endure persecution. You got to endure things, guys. When you're going to decide to follow Jesus and you're going to decide to live a godly life, you got to be able to endure it. You got to be able to endure when people offend you. You got to be able to endure it when someone writes nasty comments on your Facebook or your Instagram. And they want to argue with you about Jesus or the Bible and scriptures. You got to be able to endure it. Me, me, Jamie, I got, you know, with the YouTube, I got to be able to endure it. I got to be able to endure when someone makes videos about me. I got to endure those things and stuff like that. And you can't, when you're enduring these things, you got to endure it patiently. You got to be patient with people because see, it's the person who might be persecuting just may not have the Holy Spirit yet, may not be saved yet. Guess what? But they may get saved. See, at one point, Paul was persecuting Christians. The next one, he's, he's, he's trying to make people into Christians. See, see, imagine all the people <laughs> that knew that about Paul, you know, started hating him and cursing him. No, man, when it came to it, they, they embraced him when he snapped out of it. So when people persecute you and they come after you, yes, they may not be saved. Yes, they may not hold the Holy Spirit. Yes, they say they're Christian, but they truly don't live it. Well, be patient because, man, come on, somebody, um, just be patient because they may just be an Apostle Paul who's persecuting you. I mean, they may be a Saul who is persecuting you, but eventually they turn into an Apostle Paul. Amen. That's why we can't get so mad and get in our feelings about people talking about us and doing things against us. You got to be patient because the Bible says be patient because God is patient with you. How many times did you do dumb things in your life? How many times you weren't living for Jesus truly? I know I spent a majority of my life not really following Jesus. And there was I spent time in my life saying that I believed in Jesus, but I didn't live it. And, and I would get mad when people would quote scriptures that offended my life. I was there, too. But now I'm not there no more. So that's why it's important that when people persecute you, the, whether they're Christian or a fake Christian or a worldly person, you got to pray for them that they come to the understanding because obviously they don't. Amen. So you're going to deal with this, right? Daniel 11, 35, it says, and some of the wise will fall victim to persecution in this way. They will be refined and cleansed and made pure until the time of the end for the appointed time is still to come. Why do you get persecuted? Because God is trying to refine you. Amen. When you are being persecuted, God is trying to refine you. When you're being refined, God is getting rid of the junk out of your life. Amen. The, the way your character gets molded. Right. If you have anger issues, get, expect to get persecuted because the enemy wants to attack you. So you lash out in anger. So you start cursing people out. So you start saying offensive things about people. But see, that is where your character will be refined. See, guys, I'm all for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm all for speaking in tongues, casting out demons. That's all good. But none of that don't mean anything if you are not going to let God refine your character. Your character must be holy. Your character. And listen, people think about character and they think that he means being this, you know, sweet sunshine butterfly that doesn't say anything that offends anyone. Refine your character means you're not an angry person, that you're not a prideful person, that you're not a disrespectful, rude person and stuff like that, that that you don't antagonize people and stuff like that. You know, you you let this stuff refine you. When you're being refined, it gets the sin out of you. It gets the bad habits out of you. It gets the bad attitude out of you. Amen. It'll prepare you. Amen. And and look at Peter. When they were about getting persecuted, he pulls his sword out and he's ready to fight and he cuts another soldier's ear. But as time goes by, he let that refine his character that when it was time for him to be personally persecuted, he accepted he he accepted his fate and decided to be crucified upside down think about that if if christ and the gospel got peter crucified upside down it got john the baptist be, beheaded it got so many men crucified beheaded the only one that there's no record of him ever um you know being martyred is john, is john the apostle but all of them suffered death that was persecution at its finest. So you think about that. Why? Because of the message they preached. Think about it. We all want to preach this message that doesn't offend nobody, that it doesn't, you know, you can't do that, guys, because the Bible says that in the last days, people will 
preach and there will go to preachers who tickle their ears. See, guys, I didn't call I wasn't called by God to preach to um to say things that tickle your ear to make you feel good and sound good. Those are motivational speakers, and I'm not against a motivational speaker, but when it comes to the gospel and it comes to the word of God. It needs to, yes, it should motivate you, it should empower you, but it also will rebuke you and correct you. See, the Bible says that God chastises and disciplines those he loves. Amen. It's a good thing when you're corrected. It's a good thing when you're rebuked, right? So all these different things, if the apostles suffered persecution, they died, obviously the message and the life they lived was offensive. It They threatened. Why do you think, guys, why do you think in America... Christianity, it is the most, most persecuted religion of them all. They don't come after Muhammad. They don't come after Islam. They don't come after um, Catholicism. They don't come after, I don't know, whatever other religions there is. They don't come after those. Why are they always coming after Christians? Why? Because the message of Jesus is offensive to those who are not living right. It threatens their livelihood. It threatens them. See, they always come after our type of Christians. And it's sad that in the body of Christ, there's so many denominations and there's some people ask me, what are you, brother? What are them not denomination? I'm none, no denomination. I'm no, there's no, there shouldn't be division in the body of Christ. That's why our church is called Unity Church. There shouldn't be division in the body of Christ. Amen. And, and and like I said, it's because we need to start standing truly with the word of God says. When you stand with what the word of God says, expect persecution. If you don't stand for the what the word of God says, how many how many churches are tolerating the you know the uh, the book of Revelation, the seven letters to the churches? What was God's majority of his beef with what the church was? They were tolerating things. They tolerated Jezebel. They tolerated the the the, the it said the doctrine of the, the Nicolaitans and they tolerated all these tolerate. This is what you're seeing. If you if, if you're not being persecuted for your faith, is because you tolerate things, you tolerate sin, you tolerate all these different things of the agenda, you tolerate all these things. That's why there's no persecution. But if you stand for the word of God, it says here you you will suffer persecution. So why do they persecute you? Some of us do that. We get persecuted. Someone's coming against us in our life. God, why is this happening to me? Why do they persecute you? People are offended about your faith and what you preach because it confronts their lukewarm lifestyle or religious traditions that doesn't fit the narrative they want. Jesus didn't walk on eggshells when he preached. He offended people. We always there's, there's, That's a thing that a lot of us think, that Jesus didn't offend people. Oh, brother, when you said that, you know, you're being offensive. Matthew 15, verse 12 to 14. See, if you read the Bible and the gospel, not because someone else taught it to you, but because that's what you, that's what the Bible says, you'll see Matthew 15, verse 12 to 14. It says, then the disciples came to him and asked, do you realize you offended? <laughs> the disciples are telling Jesus, do you realize you offended? Who did, who did, who did Jesus offend? It says here, the Pharisees, who are the Pharisees? Religious people who proclaim they love God, proclaim they have a relationship with God, proclaim they're saved. This is, he said, you offended the Pharisees by what you what? You just said. Jesus was offending religious people. When you preach the word of God and people talk bad about you and they come against you and they start saying things about you, that means they got offended by the words of Jesus. So they show they're not in Christ. And what they're showing is they are a Pharisee. It says here, by what you just said, Jesus replied, every plant not planted by my heavenly father will be uprooted. So Jesus is saying the ones who are getting offended, they will be uprooted because God didn't plant them. Ooh. So when people persecute you, and they're not in Christ and they're not in people's or they claim they're in Christ. Jesus is saying, if they're getting offended by my words, what does he say here? Every plant not planted by my heavenly father will be uprooted. See, people who persecute you, guys, we got to pray that. You see, this is why this is important that you have love inside your heart. God, they talked about me. God, they said something disrespectful about me. God, they did this and that against me because of what I said and you know, I quoted the Bible. God, I pray that you bless them. God, I pray that you open their eyes. God, I pray that you open their ears. 
because guess what happens if they don't get their eyes and their ears open and don't get right with God? They will be uprooted because it says here, the Father in heaven did not plant them. Ooh, that's a scary thing. Because when you understand the Bible, the Bible says when God pulls you up on the time of harvest and he uproots you, what does he do? He says he separates you, the wheat from the tares, and he casts you into the fire, which is hell. We got we guys, no matter who persecutes us, you got to have compassion and mercy because at the end of the day, if that person doesn't open their eyes and their ears to what the Bible says, they're going to go to hell. And that shouldn't make you hate them or get mad at them. It should make you feel sorry for them. See, now I've learned as people come against me and people talk about me, I feel sorry for you. How miserable do you have to be to say what you say and do what you do? Because reality is you don't have an understanding of the word God and you're going to be lost. So I pray that you get right. I pray that your eyes get open. I pray that you get saved. Because if not, you're going down this path. I don't want you to go. Amen. And it says here, so and it says, every plant not planted by my heavenly father will be uprooted. It says, so ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind. And if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into a ditch. So Jesus is saying, when you're being persecuted by religious people for what you believe and for what you preach, it says, they will either get uprooted by the Heavenly Father, but if they do or they don't, it says ignore them. <laughs> People always ask, Jamie, what do I do with this person, you know, coming against me, accusing me and talking bad about me and this and that? Jesus said, ignore them. This is what we got to learn to start doing. When people talk about you, when people are accusing you, when people want to tear you down, you know, because you have decided to live for Jesus and preach what Jesus preached, ignore them <laughs> we got to start teaching asking god lord jesus teach me and give me the ability to ignore people <laughs> amen how many can say i need to learn how to ignore people right in the chat i need to learn how to ignore people amen jesus said ignore them they are blind guys leading the blind. And if one blind person leads another, they will both fall into a ditch. So Jesus is saying the people who are coming against you, talking bad about you and all these, he says they're blind. And now they're trying to get other, they say it's blind people leading the blind. If you notice when people are persecuting you, talking about you, they're trying to get everyone else as well to, to think the same way about you. They're trying to get everyone else to talk about you and they're manipulative people. They'll try to get everyone. And Freddie said block. That's what I do. I block you because I'm going to. That's how I choose to ignore you. I block you. If you don't like what I preach and you don't like what I say, don't follow me. As simple as that. I say it all the time at church. You don't like what I preach and say you're not my enemy. That's fine. Find a different church and God bless you. And I pray that you find the truth and I pray you find what you need in Jesus Christ. And God, I pray that the Lord blesses you. And when I see somebody that I don't agree with, with their stuff or whatever, that's fine. I don't follow them. I don't listen to them. I don't disrespect them. I don't offend them. I don't persecute them. I leave them alone. But if I feel this urge to persecute them and come after them, that means that person may have something that's true and it threatens me. And that's why I feel the need to persecute them. See, that's why people persecute you because they're insecure, insecure people who deep down inside something about them is being confronted. So they feel like they need to come after you. See, the people that are persecuting you and coming after you, they're insecure about you. It's always an insecure person who will persecute you at work. Amen. At work, the person that's talking about you, they're insecure and they're intimidated by you. The person in your family is insecure and intimidated by you because if they were secure and not threatened by you, they leave you alone. Think about it for you guys that are on here. Have you ever have have you have you have ever had someone maybe you don't like, maybe says or does things differently than you? If you are not intimidated or insecure, do you come after them? No, you leave them alone. You leave them alone. <laughs> You're supposed to leave them alone. How do I know that? Because in the book of Acts, the apostles were preaching. Once again, it was offending the Pharisees. The Pharisees decided to have this meeting, and they said, let's stop them from preaching. Let's stop them from casting out demons and speaking in tongues and what they're doing. 
once again, religious people persecuting because it doesn't fit their agenda and their narrative. Because you want to know why the Pharisees did that? Because the Pharisees didn't cast out demons. The Pharisees didn't speak in tongues. The Pharisees didn't have the Holy Spirit. And the Pharisees, they were too smart for their own good. They know so much of the Bible and history and traditions, yet they didn't know anything about God. Can I get an amen? Woo! They knew all these things because if they knew about God, they would have never crucified Jesus. See, these people don't realize the people who persecute you, they think they know God. They think they have knowledge. They think they this and that. But reality is if they really knew, they wouldn't be persecuting. Amen. So, <laughs> so when they were coming after the apostles, one of the Pharisees was actually smart and said, hey, guys, why don't we do something here? He said, why don't we leave them alone? And the, 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 they mentioned this man. I don't remember his name. They said, do you remember such and such person who started a movement and he he managed to get a couple hundred followers, but then a couple years went and you never heard about him ever again and him and his followers pretty much fell apart? They said, and he was false. They were like, if these apostles and this whole Jesus thing and where they're preaching is offending people, if this is false, they he said, um, it'll give it about a couple... Um, I don't think it was Bar Jesus. Um, there was it says there was a, a a couple. It says just give it a couple years or whatever. Give it some time. It'll fall apart just like this same guy who had his following. It says, but if we continue to persecute these men for what they're preaching, he said, and they're right. It says you may just find yourself fighting against God. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? It says you may just find yourself. Fighting against God. See, that's what should give you um, peace and that you relax. So when people persecute you because you're standing on the word of God, you're standing on, I'm going to live a godly life. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to follow what the Bible says. And people persecute you. Don't get mad because reality is they think they're fighting you. They think they're just coming against you. But reality is they're coming, they're coming against God himself. Woo, think about it. So it makes you feel sorry for them. It makes you feel bad for them. When they're coming against you at work, when they're coming against you in your family, when the friends are coming against you and these people are coming against you, they're not really coming against you. They're really coming against God because well, the reason why they're having an issue with you is because of the scriptures you're saying. Woo, the reason, see, the reason why they're coming against you is because you decided to follow Jesus. The reason why they're coming against you is because you decided to live holy. The reason why they're coming against you is because you're anointing bothers them your anointing makes their demons tremble your lifestyle your anointing your boldness your authority in jesus makes them feel insecure and insignificant amen see so that's why i gotta shut this person down but see if the person who was persecuting you actually had humility they said what can i learn from this person how can i get it together how can i get right see the people the pharisees instead of hearing what jesus was saying and repent from it they got offended and they wanted to change the message see that's the problem with christians today day because of the way it makes them feel they won't the way they feel make you change the message reality is the message to change the way we feel can i get an amen i've had people write me jamie you need to change your message that message isn't right because blah 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 how it makes people feel and how it makes me feel so we change the message of god because of the way it makes you feel shouldn't the message change the way it, you feel See, our mess, our emotions doesn't dictate the gospel. The way you feel shouldn't dictate the gospel. Guys, none of the scriptures that I read ever make me feel good sometimes because some because sometimes it's the very sin that I'm doing. See, when I when I struggled with lust and I struggled with, with sexual sin, and I read a scripture that says, if there's any hint of sexual immorality found in you, you will not inherit the kingdom. Every I would Lord change this verse because that means I'm going to hell. And then I feel condemned and this and that. And I feel this. But how about I change my way of being? So I the scripture, I let the scripture change me instead of me trying to change the scripture. This is the Christianity we live in is a bunch of Christians trying to change the Bible because it doesn't fit. It doesn't make them feel good. It doesn't fit their narrative. So they want to change it and they want you to stop preaching what you preach. They want you to change what you preach. And if you don't change what you preach, they're going to persecute you. Am I preaching, guys? It, this, this is this is this is the world that we live in. This is the world that we're living in. This is the world we're living in. 
change the gospel. I've heard people say, oh, brother, I don't want to go to church and be fake. So I'd rather just not go to church and be fake. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. How about you stop being fake so you can go to church? You'll stop going. You don't you won't go to church. So you're not fake, but you won't stop being fake so you can be at church. Come on, man. You'll sacrifice church so you can continue to be fake, but you won't sacrifice being fake so you can go to church and all these different things. And oh, a, a brother, change the gospel. Oh, you need to preach more about love. Oh, brother, you need to you need to talk more about oh, the love of Jesus. And this is not well, the love of Jesus. If he loves you, he'll tell you the same way a parent when they love their kid, they'll tell them, son, don't do that. Daughter, don't go that way, because if you love them, you'll tell them what's wrong. If you love them, you'll correct them. If a parent, if you're a parent and you don't never tell your kid what they're doing wrong, if you don't never correct them, if you don't never show them the right way, even if it hurts them, if you don't ever discipline your child and you don't love your kid. Amen. So this is the same way. So when you decide to follow Jesus, guys, when you decide to stand, this is what and we can't change. See, when persecution comes after you, you can't let it change you guys. See, that this is why it's so important that you let God build up your character in, in Christ as you're being persecuted because that's why I tell you guys don't you can't jump into ministry you can't jump to be a leader if you're if you if you're not ready character wise I don't care if you prophesy I don't care if you cast out demons I don't care if you speak in tongues all that is good but guess guys if you're if your character is not where it should be ministry will destroy you it'll make you a nasty and an ugly person guys I know I've been in ministry I've had people talk about me I've had people who say they're my friend uh betray me I've had other leaders speak bad about me i've had family members come against me and all these things and i can't let that corrupt my heart i can't let that contaminate me i gotta just say god bless them god i pray for them god i hope that you i hope, I hope that you help them but if see if your character is not good you'll be a person cursing them and speaking in tongues and still casting out demons and then those are the people that are going to hell amen you can't let persecution contaminate your character amen they're going to come after you even so-called followers of Jesus Christ. How do I know this? John chapter 6, verse 60 to 61. John chapter 6, verse 60 to 61. Remember I said that? Even so-called Christians will persecute you. Because why? They'll get Because they're offended. That's why you got to rebuke the spirit of offense. That when you hear a message, instead of getting offended by it, let it change you. And because when you're getting offended by the message, you're insinuating as you're better than the message. You're better than the word. So the board needs to be the person who was preaching is wrong instead of letting it change you. Oh, I can't believe they said that. I can't believe the pastor preached that. I can't believe the pastor said that oh, because man, blah, 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 blah. How about you humble yourself and say, you know what? He's yeah, got a point. Lord. It's the word of God. And I need to let this change me instead of trying to talk to the pastor and trying to make him change his message. See, other so-called Christians, they'll get offended. John chapter 6, verse 60 to 61. It says here, many of his disciples said, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? <laughs> you even got the disciples getting offended because what did they say? How can anyone accept this? Because the things that Jesus was preaching. So other Christians are going to tell you, how can anyone accept what you're saying? What you're saying is very hard to do. You're saying everyone has to speak in tongues. You're saying everyone needs to cast out demons. You're saying everyone needs to pray for the sick. And everyone needs to be preaching the gospel and doing ministry. And Jesus, what does Jesus say? Jesus was aware that his disciples were what? They were complaining. How many Christians, so-called Christians, you know, they, that's what when you start preaching the word, they start complaining. They start complaining. What did Jesus say? He says, does this offend you? And who were they? Followers of Christ. And they were offended because of what Jesus was saying. And what Jesus was saying, it was something that they were saying. How can anyone accept this? Because they thought their knowledge superseded what the word of God says. I know so many people who think their knowledge supersedes what the word of God says. I don't need no history book. I don't need no other book. I need the word of God. See, if God said that, trust me, Jesus would have made it in the message. Hey, guys, make sure you go to your history books. Make sure you go to this because the Bible is complete. That's why the Bible says anyone who takes or adds or anything. See, people don't want to hear this stuff. People don't want to hear this stuff. 
And you got to check yourself. Why is it that you don't want to hear this? Mm, now we're going somewhere. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 10 to 16. First Corinthians chapter two, verses 10 to 16. It says, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. You ever heard that saying? Oh, the devil's hears my thoughts or the devil or a person knows your thoughts. That's not that's not what the Bible says. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given to us. You know, people say, oh, you don't know. How could you know what God is saying? How could you know what God is going to do? What does the Bible just say here? But God has freely given that to us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. <laughs> That's why people who reject this stuff, it's people who have human wisdom. They think they're so smart. And it says here, instead, we speak words given to us by the spirit, using the spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who are not spiritual cannot receive these truths from God's spirit. It all sounds foolish to them and they cannot understand it. See, that's why they persecute you. They're not spiritual people. Have you noticed? The people that persecute you at work, the family member, the friends, or whoever it is that's persecuting you, ask yourself, are they a spiritual person? Nope. <laughs> it's, I guarantee you, the person who is persecuting you is not a spiritual person. Because it, it just, the Bible just said it here. It sounds foolish to them. And it says here, and they cannot understand it. It says, for only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. Those who are... It says only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit means. So you know how people say, oh, it's your interpretation, brother. Oh, it's your interpretation. Well, the only way you'll know is if you have the Holy Spirit. The spirit will reveal to you what it means. And it says those who are spiritual can evaluate all things. Is this Jamie's interpretation, guys, that, not, that I'm preaching? Am I, am I twisting any words here? Can somebody correct me and say, Jamie, you're a false teacher. You're twisting the words. You're saying your own interpretation. Or am I reading what the Bible says? Guys, am I reading what the Bible is saying here? It says here, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others for who can know the Lord's thoughts, who know who knows enough to teach him. But we understand these things for we have the mind of Christ. See, when you have the mind of Christ, you understand spiritual things. When you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't understand spiritual things. That's why you get mad when pe you, quote, you hear someone quote scriptures. That's why you get offended and you disagree with scriptures. And that's why you get all in your feelings and you start persecuting other men and women of God for what they preach. Because why? You don't have the spirit of God. You don't understand spiritual things and it sounds foolish to you. You tell somebody who claims they know God about casting out demons, praying for the sick, uh, um, you know, speaking in tongues and, and preaching the, the full gospel of Jesus Christ. You know how people say, oh, well, bro brother, we don't have to agree <clears throat> on, on, on everything. Yeah, we don't have to agree on everything, but we got to agree on the gospel. Jesus said this, and we got to agree on this. Uh, uh, the apostle said, let anyone, it says, if anyone, even an angel comes to preach to you a different gospel other than the ones we preach, it says, let them be accursed. So we need to preach the same gospel. That is, th that is what the Bible says, not what Jamie says. So when you don't preach, when someone is not on the same gospel tip with you, that's why they'll persecute you. Their gospel is different. Their gospel tells them it's okay to drink. Their gospel will tell them it's okay to uh to to get drunk. It's 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 okay to be um be at the club. It's okay to be smoking. It's okay to cheat on your spouse. It's okay to be manipulative. It's okay to be controlling. It's okay to not read your Bible every day. It's okay not to pray. It's okay not to speak in tongues. It's okay not to cast out demons. It's okay not. These are the people who have a different gospel. So that is why they persecute you. Amen. And I say, um, and, and so some people will say this, why they persecute you. Well, you're not Jesus. <laughs> well, you're, you're not Jesus to be offending people with the word. Has anyone ever, had, has anyone ever told you that before? Well, you're not Jesus. When you start quoting the Bible and scriptures and what Jesus did, they'll say, well, you're not Jesus. Well, let's quote somebody who wasn't Jesus and the same thing happened with the offense. 
Acts chapter 7, verse 51 to 60. Acts chapter 7, verse 51 to 60. It says, you stubborn people. <laughs> Tell me, is that not offensive? And guess who's saying this? Not Jesus. It was the apostles. It says here, you are heathen at heart and deaf to the truth. Isn't that crazy? If you say that today, you're not being Christ-like, brother. You're not being Christian. And they'll talk, they'll persecute you. But this is what he said. You are heathen at heart and deaf to the truth. The reality is people that persecute you is because they are deaf to the truth. And it says here, must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's what your ancestors did. And so do you. Name one prophet your ancestors did not persecute. They even killed the ones who predicted the coming of the righteous one, the Messiah whom you betrayed and murdered. See, people, when they persecute you, when you're just like I said, when the people at your job are coming after you, when the family members coming after you, when the fa the friend is coming after you, when the other religious and other Christians, the whoever it is on your Facebook and your Instagram is coming after you, the reason, the motive, the root of why they're coming after you is because they want to kill you spiritually. They want you to stop preaching what you're preaching. So they're trying to kill your ministry. They want you to stop talking about the, the, the scriptures. They want you to stop living a godly life. They want to kill. So the people who persecute you, they have a murderous intention. How do I know this? Because the Apostle Paul, when he was Saul, when he persecuted Christians, what did he have? Murderous intentions, and it caused them to murder. When you persecute, and this, guys, I see this so common right now in the body of Christ, other Christians coming against other Christians. When you're doing that, you have a murderous spirit. You're trying to kill other men and women of God by talking bad about them. Guys, I see this more than ever. I can even discern it from certain people that they... I know people who come up to me and say, hey, how are you? God bless you. And I know deep down inside they have a murderous spirit who has been speaking bad about me. Has anyone of you ever felt like that? You see someone who's like, hey, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. And they're fake with you, but they have a murderous spirit inside them. And they've been talking about you. They've been talking about what you preach. They've been talking about what you've been doing. They've been talking about the way you live a godly life. And they're fake, just like Judas. What, what, did, what, did, what did Judas do? When he betrayed Jesus to be murdered, he came up to him and gave him a kiss. And what did Jesus say? You betray the son of man with a kiss? People are fake, man. And Judas was a so-called follower of Christ, and he he got Jesus murdered, and then he sees him and gives him a kiss. See, people are fake. And I'll say this this much. Even Christians and churchgoers, you're fake. And, and, and if you're on here and that's you, you got to stop being fake and persecuting your brothers and your sisters in Christ. We got to deal with the devil persecuting us. We got to deal with the world persecuting us. But you say you're a believer in Christ and you're persecuting me. You're talking bad about me. You're 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 writing nasty comments on my stuff. You're 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 you're, you're telling other people horrible things so that they can you can all be in agreement to to not associate and show me the love of Christ. It's horrible. I see it on YouTube. Other men of God making videos to tear down another man of God. You, you're you trying to persecute God's people and you have murderous intentions, hoping that you can shut them down forever. You have a demon inside of you. And that is not of God. It is not of God to be doing this stuff. It's not of God. Not of God. And us as the body of Christ, we cannot participate in these things. We cannot participate in these things. Guys, if we're dealing with persecution, don't be don't be somebody that's causing persecution to another Christian. And it says here, the Messiah whom you betrayed and murder, you deliberately disobey God's law, even though you received it from the hand of angels. The Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusations. See, was, was Stephen preaching the gospel? Was he talking about you know, this is how you get saved, the love of Jesus. Was he was he saying that? Was can I get a yes or no from you guys in the chat? Was he was he saying that? Was that was he preaching? He wasn't. That's not correct. Freddie said no. He wasn't talking about that. He was quoting other verses of the old testament. And was yep, he was confronting them. Yep. And what did it do? It infuriated the religious people. When you preach Jesus, 
and you preach what the word of God says, oh, brother, you need to focus on just the love of Jesus and, and him on the cross. Stephen wasn't doing that. He was talking about old the Old Testament prophets and what they did to them in the Old Testament. And what did it do to the religious person? It said it infuriated them. See, people who persecute you, their demon gets mad and they're angry. So when they're angry, they talk about you. When they're angry, they make the, they make the stuff about you. When they're angry, they come against you at work. They're angry. They're trying to get everybody at your job to come against you. They're, they're trying to manipulate how everyone sees you and perceives you amongst friendships on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it may be. I see it. I see it all the time with other men and women of God. These people are, are, are infuriated. And so they start doing these things. And it says here, and they shook their fist at him in rage. <laughs> they shook their fist. They wanted to hit him. And it says here, but Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven, saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. Why? They put their hands over their ears. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear you. And it says here. And they rushed him and dragged him out of the city, began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats, laid them at his feet. The young man named Saul. So Saul was there as well. They stoned him. Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And, and with that, he died. See, they killed him. Religious people killed Stephen. Why? Was he preaching gospel? Was he preaching Jesus on the cross? No, he wasn't. He And it offended them. To, and, and what did they do? They killed him. When people persecute you, they're trying to kill you spiritually. They're trying to kill you so you don't preach, so you don't pray, so you don't do what you're doing, so you don't continue to live a godly life. Oh, you're you're being fake. You're not a real Christian. You're just going to go back to your old ways. You're just going to end up doing what you used to do and all that. That's persecution. So it can kill what God is doing in your life. And I just feel it in the spirit, guys. Those who are on here, the devil has been trying really hard to kill what God has been doing in you because you've made a different step in your walk with God. You've made a different decision. You're not the same person you used to be. You're not treating things the way you used to. You're, you're serving God differently in your life right now. In Jesus' name, you are, you are, you are decided to do things Jesus's way this time around. And there's a murderous spirit. I, I just feel it in the spirit. There's a murderous spirit trying to kill you spiritually to discourage you so you don't continue doing what you're doing. And it says here, that's how they killed, and that's why they killed Stephen. And who was it? Religious people. Why? Because of what he said. What did he say? He quoted the Bible. He quoted Old Testament things. He quoted scriptures, not just Jesus. He did it. And what did it do to people? It infuriated. See, guys, when people persecute you, it's because they're infuriated. They're upset. They're mad. They feel threatened and offended by Jesus. So people who come after your faith always have a spirit of murder. Expect these people to persecute you. Religious people will persecute you. Guys, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm going to read these last verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 to 29. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23 to 29. It says, it says this. So when and so when we preach that Christ was crucified. <laughs> This is no longer Jesus saying this. It says here, so when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended. The Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strengths. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things that the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. See, God will shame these people who think they're so smart. And it says he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world. Things counted as nothing at all and use them to bring nothing to what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. See, God says here, he chooses those despised in the world. See, God will choose the, per choose the person with no degree. God will choose the person who didn't go to Bible college. God will choose the person who's 
doesn't have the huge following. God will choose the person that no one's thinking of. Guys, I've had people tell me, oh, you like, oh, how, oh you're you're a pastor. Look, look at the way you look, your beard, your hair. Well, you didn't go to Bible college and and who, who are you connected with and all this stuff. God will choose the despised one, the person that people are thinking nothing of. You might be the spot the, the you might be the despised one in your family. You might be the despised one at your job. You might be the, the despised one amongst your peers. And God says He will choose you. Things counted as nothing at all and use them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. How many could say thank you, Jesus, for that? Matthew 10, 34 to 36. It says you got to be prepared that even your own family will persecute you. It says here, don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace. Isn't this crazy? This is the words of Jesus, not my interpretation. I'm reading what it says. It says here, don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against his mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. Ooh. Jesus said he will divide. People say division's all not from God. God doesn't like division at all. Division amongst the body of Christ, he doesn't like. Division amongst Christians, when non-Christians, he does like. Because he just he just said it right here. Don't Jesus, Jesus said, Don't think that I came to bring peace. I came to, he says here, to separate with a sword. The enemies will be right in your own household. <laughs> That's perfect with Freddie. That's not the Jesus people want. Yep, you're right, Freddie. People read that. Oh, Jesus would never say that. Well, that's what Jesus said. When you're, when you're going to stand for Christ, expect persecution from your own family, from the people from your own household. They're not going to like you. They're going to talk bad about you. They're going to disagree with you. Who cares? Jesus told you, and that, that should make you rejoice. That should make you rejoice. That goes to show you're doing the right thing. See, guys, when the enemy's coming after you, talking bad about you, accusing you, trying to tear you down, trying to discourage you, telling you your family's going nowhere, your marriage is going nowhere, trying to trying to live a godly marriage, trying to raise your children a godly way is a waste of time. It's not going to work. And that persecution coming, that goes to show you're doing the right thing. The enemy is upset. He's mad. Oh, your ministry is not going nowhere. You'll never be a prophesy. You'll never this. You'll never that. Who do you think you are? That is the devil talking. And it's and you got to be prepared for that because it says here the enemies of a man are those of his own household. So expect your family who are not really living for Jesus or they think they're living for Jesus to come against you. But reality is they have religion and they have no relationship. Now that I'm going to end with this. How do you respond? <laughs> it's the most important part. We all know we're going to get persecuted. We just found out why. Now, how do you deal with it? I'm going to end with this. Matthew 5, 44 and 45. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 and 45. It says, but I say, love your enemies. <laughs> you have to love those who are your enemy. That's hard, guys. To love somebody who disrespects you and talks bad about you. And this is something the Lord is, is dealing with me right now. Guys, when somebody comes against me, and stuff, I'm thinking, man, I'm going to make you pay. <laughs> the Lord says here, you got to love your enemies. It says pray for those who persecute you. You got people at work coming against you, pray for them. You got family members talking bad about you and coming against you, pray for them. And it says here, in that way, you will be acting as true children of Father in heaven. See, there's a lot of Christians who talk like they're children of God, but do you act like a true child of God? See, acting part is your testimony. What you say is your preaching of the gospel. What you act is what represents if you are a child of God. At work, you need to act like a child of God. In your midst of your family, you need to act like a child of God. Around your friends and other un unbelievers, you must act like a child of God. There's no worse thing than a preaching Christian who doesn't act like it. 
Your words need to match your actions. Your actions need to match your words. Can I get an amen? And it says here, then you will be acting as true children of your father in heaven, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends the rain on the just and the unjust alike. And I want to end with this. Let God defend you. And don't try to prove yourself. See, when Jesus was on the cross, and he was on the cross, and he was on his last moments, they said, Jesus, if you are who you said you are, and all the stuff that you preached, if you if, if it's so true, Get yourself off this cross. Did Jesus respond to them? Nope. Could Jesus have gotten himself right off the cross and said, oh, you think what I'm preaching and saying is not true? Well, let me prove it to you and get off the cross and prove it to them. He could have done it, but he didn't. You know why? Because if he would have responded to that, he would have responded in pride and ego. See, when you try to prove yourself and try to defend yourself, it's usually rooted in pride and ego. You, and see, Jesus didn't do it. And we need to follow Jesus' example. When people persecute you, don't try to prove yourself. Don't try to defend yourself. Leave it up to Jesus. Let, let that be his job. Because the Bible says vengeance is the Lord's. Man, that should give you peace. The people that have been coming against you, and, I, and I'm going to prophesy that over you guys. The people who have been talking about you, the people who have been coming against you, the demons that have been talking and telling you and discouraging you that you're going nowhere, your marriage is going nowhere, you're, you're wasting your time with your children, your job is going nowhere, your career is going nowhere. The family members that say you're a fake Christian, you, you don't really preach the, the love of God, you don't have the Holy Spirit, and your relationship with God is this and that. Don't try to prove yourself. Don't try to defend yourself. Pray for them. Love on them. Bless them and watch how God will defend you. He will defend you. And if they insinuate on this to come after you, God will take vengeance. You don't take vengeance. Revenge is not yours. The Bible says vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Guys, I, I've watched people come against other men and women of God. And when they didn't repent, it didn't go well for them. And I know this, the people who come against me, if they don't repent, they got to come in to themselves because it's the law of God. You reap what you sow. Guys, and if you yourself are doing persecuting and coming after other Christians, you better repent or you will reap what you sow and it will happen to you. Don't do it. Don't be a Saul, King Saul that was coming after a David. Don't do it. Don't do it, guys. Amen, amen, hallelujah. How many enjoyed this message? How many of this message did this touch you guys? This message, was it on time for you? My sister actually, guys, before I pray at the end, my sister said that our, our sister Stephanie, who's on here, wanted to share a testimony. Stephanie, you on there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, everybody. God bless you all. Okay, I'm going to try to make it um, as fast as possible. Um, just to recap, for some of you who don't know me, or my story, or my what I'm dealing with. Um, my mom passed away in a facility that was trying to supposedly just rehabbing her from a hip replacement surgery. And I have been waiting five months for an autopsy, in addition to fighting with facilities in South Carolina to get my sister, who's in the same facility still to this day, here closer to me. Um trying to hold it together today. I got a call today. Actually, I, um, oh my God. All right. Um, tomorrow is my fiance's birthday who passed away about 16 months ago. And I got a call today that my mom's autopsy is finally completed. The coroner who I've been calling every single week for the past five months um, is actually out of the office and he called me from his cell phone to let me know this information was completed 
and he emailed me the report. Um, I'm not physically in South Carolina to pick up the document to, so that the funeral home can complete their death certificate. So the funeral director will go pick it up for me tomorrow and um, FedEx me the actual death certificates. However, while I was on the phone with this funeral director who was amazing and helping me once I got stranded in South Carolina trying to get to my mom and to my sister when this happened, um, listen to me vent and you know I broke down over the phone and while I was on the phone explaining my frustrations with this facility trying to get my sister to Florida the funeral director said oh first thing in the morning we're gonna handle that I can help you do that you shouldn't be doing any of this stuff that's their job and I just broke because for five months you guys I have been calling facilities in Florida facilities in South Carolina, social workers, attorneys, um, uh, uh, the sheriff's department. Like I've been on the phone and I have notes where I've wrote and stuff, written stuff down and being nice to people and trying to stay calm and trust the Lord and, 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 and this whole process. And I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not in the medical field. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, what direction to take with certain things. And when I finally obtained some of my sister's um, admission records that these facilities in Florida are asking the nursing home for, I started sending it to them myself. So, Jamie, you said to me about a month ago, I, I was at I was really in a, a, a I was hurting and I, I just I was like, God, I don't know what else to do. I know God is with me. And I know from day one, when I got the call that my mother passed away and my phone completely went um, broken, it wouldn't even turn on everything that happened and led up to today. God has strategically moved. I mean, down to the days and even on this day where God knew I would be home tomorrow to honor my fiance. And I had some stuff that I was trying to do tomorrow that now God had this 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 facility call me and, and, and the corner and everything is coming coming together. Finally, five months, you guys. And I know I believe that the number five represents grace and God's grace is so real. And I just wanted to encourage Jamie. And my testimony is that Jamie, your exact words to me was that it was a false burden. I, that I, God knew that I feel like if I don't do it, it's not going to get done. And God said through you to be still, he's got this right. And the second part that you said was I was going to be, um, I'm trying to get the words that you said, um, I'm not going to, the person that's going to come and help me. Oh my God. I can't remember the line. I'm sorry. I'm trying to. I, I remember I, I told you, I said, uh, and, and now it's all coming to me because I kind of forgot too. But I remember I told you, you were, you were wondering like, how am I going to do it? This and that. And I said, don't, the Lord told me to tell you, don't worry about how you're going to do it. How are you going to bring her? I was like that. Um, Someone that you least expect is going to help you and they're yes. going to come and help. That's exactly what you said. And today, Jamie, this funeral director told me tomorrow morning they will help me. She said, we're going to take care of this and I'm going to help you. Praise Jesus. My sister has had a ingrown toenail that's been bleeding since December. OK, my mother was not sick. She fell and broke her hip and ended up in this facility. And this autopsy, I can't even open it. The email is still sitting in my phone and I'm like, God, I cannot read this. I'm sorry. All right, it's all right. And it's like, God, I'm always like by myself and I do have family members. But when I tell you it's been only the Holy Spirit in this house with me and God, and it's like, I can't even call my brother and say, come over, let's just read this together because he's so freaking lost. Like, you know, and I'm the only one that's got it. Like, it, like I'm the only one that has God that, like, okay, we're going to do this. I could, I could do this. And I'm really struggling tonight because this is going to finally give me the information to take to the attorneys because I know that this is their fault and they have to pay. 
Like my mother was 59 years old. She was young. She wasn't sick. My mother didn't have issues like that. And the only reason my sister's in that facility is because she has cerebral palsy and my mom was her caregiver. So now she, I can't, I, she's stuck there and I'm here and it's just been the worst five months of my life. Like, so tired every day like you guys Jamie I, I have you guys I'm I, I have a, a home church but you guys are like my extended family and I love all of you guys and like my apostle would you know call me encourage me when I'm in church you know but it was when Jamie you told me you said it was the person I least suspect that's gonna help me I was like who because I don't have no help and this funeral director said she's gonna help. Uh, uh. That's the guys. That's the most beautiful thing in in God is that when we don't see a way, God clearly is going to make a way, and when we feel like we're by ourselves, we're never by ourselves. God always has his people, his Holy Spirit, his <laughs> angels always there with us. And um, the reason why I wanted her to to um, share this testimony, because, guys, sometimes we think our life is bad. We think we go through tough things. Somebody's got somebody's got it way tougher and somebody's going through harder, harder things. Sometimes the little things that we go through in this life, we we think. um let's see. We think that, uh, oh, what I'm going through is so bad. Somebody's got it rough. But the good thing is you have Jesus Christ. You're never alone. You're never alone. And that's why it's so important, guys, in the body of Christ, that we stay united and we be with each other. Imagine that, you know, Stephanie's going through these things. And imagine other Christians persecuting her and coming after her. Imagine, you see how unnecessary that is? Oh, it's unnecessary in the body of Christ. That's why this what this message about persecution is so important. And you know, praise God. You know, I I told I, I you know I prophesied to her and it, and it came to pass. And that's all great and all, but the just to show that God comes through, guys. When when persecution, trials, tribulations come, God will never leave you hanging. God will never leave you where you're at. Amen. And 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 it, and it's so guys, I've been through some tough seasons in my life where I felt like God abandoned me, but he will never abandon you. He will never leave you hanging and he will never let you go through anything you cannot handle. And he will provide a way out. He will provide. And prophecy is real. When God releases a prophetic word, people say, oh, you're not a prophet. Uh, I don't need to be. God, uh, I don't need to be. And you don't need to be either to release a prophetic word and encouragement an encouraging word and help and pray and bless. That's why it's so important. We're talking about persecution and people coming against us. But if we band up together and we unite in the body of Christ, we shouldn't be coming against each other. We should not be coming against each other. We should be helping each other. We should be praying for each other and never let the enemy isolate you. I say this all the time. A, an isolated Christian is a struggling Christian. Never isolate yourself. But praise God for that testimony. I'm glad that what the Lord said, it, it happened, it came through, and it make, it encourages me. That goes to show I ain't crazy. Because <laughs> sometimes God releases words, and we're like, man, uh, is it going to happen? And what if I was wrong? You can't you can't be like that. When you're a prophetic person or prophet, prophet, you don't even have to be a prophet. You could just have a prophetic gift. And, and, and God, over whatever he says, he will do it. He will do it. Guys, the Lord gave us a word this year. This is the year of harvest. And I'm sure some of you guys are like, man, it's been a rough year. It's been a hard year. It's been a tough year. But even the tears that you sow, you will reap in joy. And I prophesy that over Stephanie, Stephanie's life. Every tear you have cried, every tear you have sown, your tears have been the seeds and I pray in Jesus' name, you will start to reap a harvest of joy and laughter. I prophesy it over your life right now in the name of Jesus, man. I feel the presence of God. I'm going to stop this recording real quick.